five shocking reasons you are killing your content. Plus, if you stick around to the end of the video, I've got one piece of bonus advice I'm gonna throw on the end for those that watch all the way through. You know that 80% of your buyer's journey in B2B is online. So that means if you're not making content, you're not even on their radar, you're not top of mind, you're not at the table when they are making their decisions. They don't know the solutions that you provide. When you look at the buyer's pyramid, you know, obviously you know, you've got the 3% that are buying now, you've got six to 7% that are open to it. If they see something, you've got 30% that are not thinking about it, but, but maybe if your content's good, it'll get them thinking about it. You've got 30% that don't think they're interested, but could possibly be impacted, might decide to follow along. And then you got 30% at the bottom that are definitely not interested. So you know making content is going to help you reach more of the buyers and bring them into your network. Even if they're not buying right away, they might follow along because you're bringing value to them. So let's go over how you're killing your content so that you can make the biggest impact with the content that you're making and you can stretch those marketing dollars, stretch them out much, much further. Number one, you're not sharing the content with your team. So many times where I reach out to someone on a team and I'm like, oh, hey, did you see this piece of content? And they say, no. If you're not making content that you want to share with your team, what are you making anyway? You're supposed to be supporting the team with your content. Okay, now this kind of piggybacks on number one, but number two is team is not interacting. That means they don't get it. Now, obviously the excellence, their area of excellence, sorry, <laughs> is in a different area than you. You get the value, right? You know the top of mind awareness, the Toma that comes from all of this, and it's up to you to get them on board with that strategy. Next is you are tagging people that are not interacting with your content. The people that are tagged need to be engaging with the post. What you may not know is platforms, this applies to all social platforms, whether it's YouTube or it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or any, any others that I haven't mentioned. If you tag an account on there and that account doesn't interact with the content, that platform then starts to think something's a little suspicious. Maybe you're a spam bot. Maybe you're someone taking, trying to take advantage of the algorithms. So they're going to tank the exposure. It's very important that these people react, engage, comment, which is super, super important to help extend that reach, right? The whole goal is to reach more people, to educate them as to why it makes sense to work with you. Your team is not watching the content all the way through. Now, I follow up with content that I work on because I wanna know, does this bring value? Does this resonate? Does this, does this create the, the right experience? And I don't know how many times I've reached out. And I'm like, oh, so what did you think of this interview or this video? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I watched the first couple minutes. Now, if your content is only a couple minutes long, that's great, that means they watched it all the way through. However, if it's a longer piece of content, seven, eight, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it is, and they're only watching the first couple minutes, what happens is regardless of the platform, again, this is this is doesn't matter on the algorithm that everyone keeps griping about. Look, th these content platforms, these social media empires are built on keeping people engaged, keeping people entertained. They want people on their platforms you wanna advertise on their platforms, you need to keep this in mind. So if people are not watching all the way through, in the beginning, the, the there's a little bit of forgiveness, right? They may be like, oh, like it's just not our target market. It'll try to adjust to who it shows it to, to try to align with the target market. But if that keeps going, and people keep only watching the first couple minutes, then it's not gonna keep getting showed. It's just gonna tank. You're gonna wonder, gee, why am I not getting any traction on this content? Because the way that your team interacted in the beginning kind of set the tone and it's going to waste. So make sure, especially the first people on board that you are sharing this with are people that are gonna watch all the way through. They're gonna engage. They're gonna maybe give you some feedback, leave some comments or share it with people in their network because they see the value that you bring. Number five, and this is a big, big killer. I left it to number five for a reason. You're making content to sell and not to educate. You've heard me talk about the power of educating and bringing value to your network. So if you're just making content because your goal is to sell, 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 then your content is going to tank, tank, tank. You're gonna be putting your marketing dollars into the proverbial toilet and just flushing them away because you just, you're, you missed the boat. Bonus, you've stayed all the way through 
a copy, the written content that goes along with your photos and your videos is terrible and again sounds like a sales pitch. Now with the advent of AI, a lot of platforms now have introduced AI bots and they read through the copy. If they decide it's a sales tone, who's here is used grammarly, it detects tone pretty accurately. If the text is sales tone, then it doesn't show it to people. So you could be killing it on the video and making this rocking awesome video, yeah! But then your copy kills it and never goes anywhere. Or, you know, piggybacking to a couple numbers ago, you could be tagging people that aren't gonna interact with it. Make sure the people that you are tagging, make sure your copy all reflects that. Now, this video is not sponsored by them. However, I do find it to be a very valuable tool when it comes to that original hook, the start of your copy to try to bring people in is subjectline.com. You can put in whatever hook, subject line uh, that you think is going to get open rates or get attention and then it will rate it on a hundred point scale and then it will also give you five alternates. The first hook to this video as well as the title that I'm going to be using on YouTube were all created on subjectline.com. Again, it's not sponsored. I just think if you don't know about it, you really should know about it because it's great to have a free tool in your arsenal to make a difference. If you liked this, please remember to click like, subscribe, comment, you know, engage to show the value because without your engagement, the platforms are going to think this video sucks and they're going to tank it and I don't want that for any of us. Thanks and have a great day.